Hi. Fades and transitions can be easily adjusted in Magic's Movie Studio, Movie Edit Pro, and Video Pro X using the Object and Edit Trimmers. In this tutorial, we'll look at using the Object Trimmer. This tutorial continues on from parts 1 and 2 where we saw how to make simple fades and transitions and use transition templates. The next tutorial will show the Edit Trimmer for transitions. The Object Trimmer can be used for making a precise fade in and fade out, moving or nudging an object on the timeline, precise trimming, moving object content, and creating a transition. I'm going to assume that you know how to do basic editing, that you know what a trim clip means, and that you have watched at least part one of fades and transitions, or already know how to use fades and transitions. I'll refer to both Movie Edit Pro and its new name, Movie Studio, as Map. I'm using Map 2022 Premium, and everything that I show here also applies to Video Pro X and Movie Studio 2022. There are some side effects to watch out for. You get a different result depending on adjacent trimmed or untrimmed clips. Objects on other tracks might move, and photos behave slightly differently. We'll see these as we go along. We'll start with fades. I have four objects on track one, one on track three, and an audio object on track five. On track one, the first object is a photo. The next three are videos. None has been trimmed and there are no fades or transitions. Why is the audio on track five? Because that is where Magix puts an imported audio object, and if you're using storyboard mode, the audio file will show up. It will not show up if you put the audio file on a different track. We'll stick with timeline mode. I'll start with the third clip. As we saw in part one, the fade handles at the beginning and ending of an image or video clip can be used to create the fades. However, we don't know exactly the duration of the fade. This is where the object trimmer is useful to do frame accurate editing. Before opening the trimmer, I want to check the duration of this untrimmed clip. I'll select it and open the properties with Ctrl E. The clip is 10 seconds, 16 frames, and the file playtime is the same. Thus we can tell that this clip has not been trimmed. I'll place the playback marker at the beginning of the clip. Note the time on the timeline at the beginning of the clip is 43 seconds, 19 frames. I'll leave the fade in on the third object. Right click on the object, and on the menu we see the Edit Trimmer, shortcut N, and the Object Trimmer, shortcut Shift N. Since there is no transition and we want to fade in or out, I'll select the Object Trimmer to open the interface. From now on, I'll use the shortcuts to open the trimmers without mentioning how. The Object Trimmer interface is now showing. This may look a bit daunting, but it's really quite simple. At the top left of the interface, it says Trimmer, Single Object, so this acts on the selected object. The left side of the interface refers to the left end of the selected object. The right side, the right end of the object. The left side has a monitor with tabs for the first and the end frame of a fade-in. The right side monitor has tabs for the start frame and the last frame of a fade-out. In the middle, there are fading in buttons and fading out buttons. And now we see the duration of the fade in and zero for the fade out in the counters. Thus, the images in the two monitor tabs for the left end show different images, the first and last frames of the fade in. But the images for the right end are the same since there's no fade out. I'll select the end fade in monitor and change the values for the fade in and we see the number of frames and the image for the end frame changes. Note that we can see the impact of the fades on the object in the timeline while changing the values. I'll select the Start Fade Out monitor and change the values for the fade out. Again, we see the number of frames and the image for the Start Fade Out frame changes. So, if you have made a fade in or fade out manually and you want them to be a certain duration, just use the shortcut Shift N and make the adjustment here. It's very quick. I'll leave the fades at 20 frames each. 
Let's look at the rest of this interface. In the middle is object content. And if you watch my tutorial on moving object content, here is another way to adjust it for a trimmed clip. Since this clip has not been trimmed, obviously the object content cannot be moved within the clip. For illustration, I'll quickly trim the beginning of the third object. In the trimmer, we now see in the object content box the number of frames, 94, that is to the left of the start that can be used. OK. I'll quickly trim the right end and go back into the trimmer. The object content value hasn't changed, but the value of the lower right timer has decreased because the right end has now been trimmed and there is less content to the left of the right end to play with. Below that are left and right arrows with a counter, and just below is a timer showing the location on the timeline of the beginning of the clip, the same value that we checked before, 43 seconds, 19 frames. The left and right arrows can be used to move the clip left and right. So if you want to nudge a clip by a frame or two, here is the most precise way to do it. However, what happens depends on whether or not the adjacent clip is a photo or an untrimmed or trimmed video clip. Right now, moving the object to the left changes the start location on the timeline and we see this reflected in the timer. The left clip has not been trimmed, so MAP assumes that you don't want to trim it. Thus, moving the selected object to the left will move this object over top of the left clip, creating a transition. I'll click on OK, and you can see the transition that's been made. Also, everything to the right and below also move to the left. I'll undo that and reopen the object trimmer. I'll try moving the object to the right. This will push everything that is to the right and on other tracks towards the right. But you won't see this until you accept the change. Note that a gap forms at the left of the moved object. When I click on OK, watch what happens to the objects on tracks 3 and 5. They move to the right. I'll undo this and reopen the object trimmer. Now, what happens if the left clip is a photo? I'll switch to the second object by using the left arrow button at the bottom left. The left and right arrows allow you to select the previous or next object on that track. I'll move the second clip to the left. This pushes the right end of the photo in because a photo is like a trim clip. This changes the duration of the photo. No transition is created. I'll move the clip to the right and the duration of the photo increases. For photos and trim clips, the program assumes that you want to trim or untrim it, not create a transition. We'll do this again later with a trimmed clip. I'll cancel out. I'll select the third clip. Continuing on, at the bottom left and right are arrow buttons with a counter and a timer. The left side will trim or untrim the left end of the clip. The right side will trim or untrim the right end of the clip. The counter will indicate by how much you trim. The left timer indicates the location within the clip of the starting frame, zero in this case because the left end is untrimmed. The right trimmer indicates the location of the right end of the clip from the untrimmed start or rather how much material is at the left of the last frame, whether trimmed or untrimmed. It shows 10 seconds, 15 frames, which is the duration to the left of this frame that we can play with. Remember, we looked at the clip length? It was 10 seconds, 16 frames. Since the clip has not been trimmed, we can only trim it. Click on the right arrow of the left end and the clip duration decreases. Watch the timeline and you can see the impact. The left end moves to the right, opening up a gap. The right end doesn't move. Watch the first frame in the monitor change as the clip is trimmed. This is where you can see the frame that you want as the starting frame. Now watch the object content counter and the object location counter and timer. The counters change by the same amount and the start position of the clip moves. Now we have some object content that can be moved back and forth using the object content buttons, but only in one direction to start with. The bottom right counter 
also changes since moving the object content in effect trims the right end. When I accept the changes by clicking on OK, we see the trimmed clip on the timeline and nothing else moves. Back in the object trimmer, I'll trim the right end using the bottom arrow and watch the last frame of the right monitor, the counters and timers. The image changes as the clip is trimmed. The counter shows the number of frames trimmed this time and the timer shows the usable duration at the left of the last frame in the trimmed clip. Note that the object content does not change. Also, nothing happens to any other objects on the timeline when I click on OK. We see the clip on the timeline with fades and a gap at the left and right ends. I'll go back into the object trimmer and we see that the counters for moving the object, the left end and the right end, have been reset to zero. That is because each time that you want to move the object or trim it, you'll be able to see by how many frames that you're trimming or untrimming. I'll cancel out and undo those changes. Now, let's look at what happens if the left clip has been trimmed. I'll select the second clip, open the object trimmer, and trim the right end. Click on OK. There's a gap and I'll close up the gap by dragging everything that is at the right. I'll remove the fade in on the third clip, select it, and move the object to the left. No crossfade is created. The left end of the moving clip pushes in the right end of the left clip, effectively trimming it. MEP assumes that since the clip has been trimmed, you want to trim it more, not create a transition. Click on OK and we can see the result. Objects to the right and below also moved as before. Back in the object trimmer, I'll move the clip to the right. This untrims the left video up until it can't be untrimmed anymore and then a gap opens up. Click on OK and we see the result. See the difference between trimmed and untrimmed clips? If the left clip is untrimmed, a transition is created by the right clip moving over top. If the left clip has been trimmed at its right end, then moving the right clip trims or untrims the left clip. Untrimming the right end pushes the clip at its right, towards the right, without creating a transition. However, the right object moves over top of the object at its right, creating a transition. Upon clicking OK, we see this transition. Other objects at the right and below do not move. This is just something to watch out for. The last thing to mention in this trimmer is at the bottom of the interface. At the extreme left and right are two buttons. The ones with the scissors are for switching to the edit trimmer, which is for transitions, and which is the topic of the next tutorial. To summarize, the object trimmer can be used for precisely creating a fade in, a fade out, moving the object content, moving the object left and right on the timeline, and trimming and untrimming the left and right ends. That's it for this tutorial. To see how to use the edit trimmer, watch part four of Fades and Transitions. Thank you for watching. Until next time, enjoy.